Welcome back to Dragon Quest VIII, where we have finished the game. It's all over. Or is it? If we just talk to this person here in the Argonia Church, did you know that King Clavius had an elder brother called Eltrio? I didn't know that. Well, apparently he gave up his title and everything and left Argonia. I don't know why, though. Mm hmm. A mystery. Right, so let's head out of here. I should say, just clipped out the last episode as well. When you finish the game, you have a little glimpse of a scene in a little um, location. I should say as well, this is we've been reverted to back before the time we defeated Raptor. So as I said, I had a really strange dream the other day. It was on the top of some mountain when suddenly a strange emblem appeared. Oh, interesting. If we speak to these guys, I think, yeah, basically, long story short, we've gone back in time to before we defeated Raptor. So we've got all six party members in tow and we can now head off to where this location is. So I don't think the game really gives you many clues apart from the fact that you can see it from a distance in a lot of places like Baccarat and the Seaview Church. You can kind of see it. I can't quite remember who it is. I'm hoping it will be quite obvious. Uh, is that it? Uh, yes, that is it. Found it immediately. Right. There are a few um, kind of little sub-stories in little locations like the... Um, the minister thing in Argonia that we will go back and do eventually. Right, we're here. So, what is this place exactly? A little altar on the top of a hill with a dragon. Well, it's definitely going to be a photo opportunity, so I'll snap that on the way in. I'm doing pretty well for photos, it's just the kind of annoying ones I haven't done, and the kind of monsters where you've got to defeat 30. It starts the party. Angelo, is this where you had your dream about? I recognise this place. It was. And Yangus had the same dream, and King Trode. Hmm, Red had it. Mori as well, and Jess, all of us had exactly the same dream. Don't like it, neither. Right, well I think there is only one thing for it. I think we've got to go in. Here we are, in the completely uncharted land, so there's no map for this place at all. Oh, I'm going to have to stop and get the monsters for this place. There's the dungeon later on we're going to be going through a hundred times over the course of this playthrough, but this one I think we'll just hopefully try and do the once. We've got Dark Devil Dog and a Hellstalker. Oh, and they're all too stunned to move. Wonderful luck for me. I should say, I'm trying to put on a good mood for this video, but I'm in a very grumpy mood, I must say. It's halfway through Ultra Miami, which is the sacred time of year for me, and it's been rained off. It's absolutely devastating. They missed Hardwell set and... I have no words. I'm hoping they'll reschedule. I'm only after day one at the moment. I've got no idea if day two is even taking place at the time of recording. But it's an emotional time. But, as always, gaming exists to take your mind off the bad stuff. As it always will. Sometimes it's a necessary distraction. <laughs> That's the only good thing I can think about playing RuneScape, in that it's a necessary distraction. Honestly, I think my playtime for RuneScape is about 400 days. It's so bad, and I've got all of those were wasted hours. Right, there are two ways to go here. Obviously, we want to go the way of treasure. I can't really remember where that is. I think it's this way. I'm very surprised that there isn't a map for this place. And this cavern, it looks massive, I must say. Like, this this is the only dungeon in the game that I think is quite similar to Waterfall Cave. Only a mini medal. But Waterfall Cave, where that is small, this place is huge. Right, we definitely want the skipper at some point. Uh, nothing around here. Maybe there is only one way to go here. Unless I'm being blind. And we need the hood, the skipper, and the shade. For all for the best diary. Go on then. Let's go for the shade. Gonna need them all eventually. But yeah, I think I'm more or less up to date on the defeated monster list. I haven't checked in a while. Right, similar attention for Jess and... No, actually, we'll use Kaboom. Kaboom. Close enough. That's definitely not going to take them all out, is it? Need more powerful... <laughs> nowhere near. We need more powerful all-hitting spells. I don't think in all of my playthroughs I've never had the ultimate sword ability for the hero, which I presume is Giga Gash. And I think you need... I mean, it says Giga Slash at the bottom of both the sword and the hero skill path. So I think you get both of them and then you get Giga Gash. That's going to be annoying if that... Oh dear. Yeah, I might try and go for it. I think I might have to farm skill points, though, because the hero's got so many good abilities. Like, we're pretty much full on... Uh, we've got a decent amount of spears for the Thunder Thrust and Lightning Thrust. We've got Omni Hill from the, the hero skill buff, and I think we've got the MP reduction as well. 
And we've got a decent bit in swords for Falcon Slash. <laughs> like, some of the characters get no abilities. Like, Angelo gets pretty much nothing. He gets the sarcastic laugh ability and then oomph, and that's about it. There's nothing really that's worth using for him. Jess gets Magic Burst and Kazing, which is 200 skill points just to get those two. Yangus gets some axe abilities and then that's pretty much it. But the hero just gets everything. Like the hero and Jess, you need just every skill point you can get. Right, this should be the final turn. They pack a lot of damage. I wasn't even looking at my health. You'd be careful with that guy for here, because this is a very dangerous dungeon. This is the post the post-game dungeon, really. This place is on a higher level than Juggeroth's dungeon, definitely. The only other dungeon after this is just pure bosses, so... This is the hardest dungeon in the game just for, like, normal enemies. Well, this... If you consider the one after as a kind of extension of this one. So we're only in the early stages so far. I've got no idea where this is going to lead, story-wise, obviously. Um, right, two ways. Uh, I want to go the way of treasure. Don't quite remember which way is the correct way. Ah, uh, this looks like it's the proper way, which means I don't want to go here, really. Um, Oh, you know what? We'll just come back and get them later off camera. Just do it nice and easily. Right. We continue downwards by the looks of it. I've no idea where the teleport really took us, unless it's just into the sort of heart. What is that? Monument of some kind. Worshipping someone. Interesting. I can't remember what enemies we got now and which ones we didn't. It was a fly breathing dragon. More interesting. What else are we going to see? Oh, this place is epic. Look how big this is. This is like Waterfall Cave plus plus plus. That's so sick. It looks incredible. With it. Okay, good. This is the way of treasure. Come. We've come the right way then. But honestly, this place looks like... It looks like the place you kind of want to come on your holiday. Like all these hot springs. Suit of liquid metal armor. Wonderful. Is it? Or have we got four sets of them already? We might have six sets of them. Why is it gone? It's, it's probably in a stack somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, I'm carrying two. Did I even give any to... <laughs> I think um, Red and Mori have just been standing around without the liquid metal armor. I went to the, all that effort of getting it, but never gave it to them. Are we getting around here? We're not, are we? I think we got this guy already, so we can run away from this one, unless there's anything... No, okay, we need the hood, maybe. <laughs> I can't remember which ones we've done. My brain does not work anymore. It's because I'm all examined out at the moment. Too many things going on in the head. Right. Oh, see, the timber detention is such a lifesaver. I can't quite remember where you can get the second one. Unless... I think it's in this dungeon, actually. I think there's a skull helm in a chest somewhere near the top, I think. Which would be the second timber detention, which we'll give to Angelo, I think. Will we? We'll give it to Angelo for normal enemies, and then maybe give it to the hero instead for bosses. Not sure. I mean, at this point in the game, I'm quite happy to involve Red and Mori in the strategy as well, because we've sort of more or less finished the story now. There's there's maybe a, a second ending, maybe. But, yeah, I'm happy to incorporate Red and Mori now. I just don't use them in the main game, just because they're not relevant to the story at all. They're sort of like side character 1 and 2 instead of characters 5 and 6. I mean, I don't really know if the story writers could have done any better in, like, giving them a better reason to join the party. Because Red just joins because she reckons you stink of treasure and she's going to get rich just by hanging around you. And then Mori just joins because he admires you. Like, neither of them have got any big reason to, like, A, stop the end of the world, or B, have any vengeance against Rapthorn at all. They just kind of join you for their own personal reasons rather than... Well, just non-existent reasons, really. <laughs> just They're just sort of there to... They're brilliant characters gameplay-wise. Once we get a bit later on in the post-game, we'll see them come to the full shining effect but not just yet I think they've both got Kazing or well, Red has got Dance of Life with a fern which is basically just Kazing anyway I think it might be a cheaper Kazing as well do you think we'll get around that? happy with that? right I love these watery effects on the side of the cave I've got no idea how accurate they are to like real life but they look very cool I suppose you need a source of light to be able to see all of it and the only sources of light is these like tiny little sconces in random parts of the cave. Right, we'll go for the skipper because we haven't got them already. And I'm pretty sure. I I think I've got pretty much every... We might have a check of the best diary after this fight because I think I've pretty much got everything, but... Could be wrong. Just fire every ability. 
These guys... Oh dear. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> right, we might be blocked anyway. Oh, I'm definitely blocked. One of them is coming back. Oh dear. Mm, I wonder if that does the same... Is that just it, Jess? Or... Okay, it is just Jess. Could have been worse. Yeah, these guys look properly evil with that red eye. Especially with this HD mod. Oh dear. <laughs> More spells are coming back. Angelo's going to swish himself. Oh dear. <laughs> How did the other two take zero damage? What? I don't know. Uh, I'm fizzled anyway. <laughs> oh, I don't like this fight. <laughs> Yangus is the only one with a sensible move here that will actually work. What the, what the, what are they doing? <laughs> Why is that happening? <laughs> Sometimes I don't understand the mechanics of this game. Right. Jess with the Timbrel, and then I'm joking, just Falcon Slash. Hopefully these moves are... I don't know how they've all dodged. <laughs> so that can't have been luck, surely. Four dodges in a row. I'm not having that. Yeah, bounce where you like. I've stopped using spells. It's just an annoying fight now. I'm pretty sure we haven't got these guys already. I don't think I'm wasting any time. Oh well. We'll see this through. Okay, there we go. I <laughs> don't know why the others' attacks just weren't landing at all. There we go. Got there in the end. Are going to dodge both of these? Why does that do zero? Is that an elemental thing? Are they just completely resistant to wind? I don't even know if this attack is wind. <laughs> oh, I don't understand. As much as I know about this game and love it, there's still some things that baffle me. Forever be an unanswered question of, did Marcello actually kill the Lord High Priest? <laughs> and various many other things. We had a comment in the last video about I mean, I'm adamant that Jess and Angelo would never end up together in a million years. Jess could do a hundred times better than Angelo. But some comments reckon they're decent for each other. I don't think they are at all. I don't think Jess would be hanging out anywhere near him if they were just sort of on their own together. I think she'd be running away quite quickly. I mean, it begs the question, would, would Angelo be a decent person, I mean, not a creep, if he were just on his own with one person? Is it all for show? Interesting. Again, it's a question we're never going to get the answer to, but... Right, I'm going to save that guy because we're going to run into him later, any. Oh, we're back in the nice arena. Oh, that's just so good, isn't it? Uh, right, uh... This must be the only place in the game without a map. Especially the only cave. What is that? Is that a dragon? Or is that half... Dragon, half human? Alright, I want to be going the way of treasure, obviously. Try and get everything. There's another mural of a dragon on the wall, and then... A guy with a sun spear, sun sword, staff. Good, come the right way. I don't think this is a skull helm. I think that's a bit later on. I can't remember what this is though. It can't just be a mini medal, surely. Cedar skill. We'll take that. Honestly, with every Dragon Quest game, all the seeds we get throughout the game, I don't allocate like right until like even after we're level 99 because I'm so unsure of who to give them to. <laughs> like just because they're one-time things, I just never end up using them because I'm. I don't want to make, don't want to give them to the wrong person, basically. But I think any skill seed has got to go to the hero, surely. Right, I'm not going to fight him either, because I'm pretty sure he'll show up in a chest later on anyway. Did we get that chest up there, or is that to come? Oh, that looks so, I'd love to have a bath in there, look at that. That looks fucking lovely. Right, we continue on. Yeah, again, I think this place must just have been... Start with Waterfall Cave and then just make it massive. That's kind of the vibe of this place. Another mural. Who are these guys worshipping? Who is that? They don't look anything related to, like, Dormagus or Raptorum at all. This looks like an entirely different story that's being told with these murals now. Oh, look at this. <laughs> this place is so sick. And then a man and a woman. Not sure who they are. Maybe. I can't get over how incredible this room looks. Like Thanatos' shield. Getting me mythology out now. Thanatos is the Greek god of death. Oh, that's definitely cursed, isn't it? I have to chuck that in the alchemy pot with some saint's ashes, I think. I don't know what it makes. It can't be the liquid metal shield, because he's made one of them already. That's from the ruinous shield. Eh. Yeah. We're making it out of there. But yeah. I do love how, like, it's seemingly every fantasy game built... Just... Every fantasy game draws something from mythology. But it's kind of hard not to, like, mythology is like the first story ever told, in a way. I mean, Greek myth dates back to, like, stupid BC, like, two or three thousand BC. 
is insane. I've, obviously, my obsession with it has come from Percy Jackson reading all those books again, which I'm now going through for a second time. I'm going to have a go at writing my own fan fiction at some point. But a nice clean fan fiction, I think. Not the dirty ones like most of them. You read the first page and go, oh, this is nice. You read the second page and go, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Every single time. Oh, we're above the clouds now. We've come out into the open and we are high up. Can we even see the floor from here? No, we are well above the clouds. There, we're getting a bit dangerous now, getting into poisoned regions. Right, one of those two chests is a can of box. Or whatever it is now, Pandora's box. Just go straight for the poison. It's only one damage a tick anyway. Right. Which one's it going to be? Uh, it's this one. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Pandora's box. I can't remember if we've beaten Pandora's boxes before. It's a different one in the Juggeroth region, isn't it? It's like Coffer of Death or something. Right. Timbal and fingers crossed we don't get Kothwacked. It's always the game with these chests. Mm. Oh, they hit hard, didn't they? Like monsters now are just they take another big step up after you beat Rapthorn. I mean it's only in this place to be fair. But this is where we're gonna kind of get the final normal monsters. I think. I think of the ones I'm missing from the best story, I think there's a few in the water. Especially around Slime Island. I know you get some different enemies around there that just have to jump on the boat and go back for eh. So I'll get through there. I think by and large, actually. Let's have a look after we get through this. I think by and large I've pretty much done it, I think. It must be on like 90% plus. Or at least I will be once we've come through here and killed everything. No, it's just going to be all the bosses after that. Just down there like a tank. I think that Dragon Robe... Dragon Robe must be a fixed damage reduction of spells. So if they hit below a threshold it just does zero. Whereas Liquid Metal is percentage, which... Liquid Metal is definitely going to be better in, when we come up against the final bosses. Right. I don't get much interest in from Trode. See how far we've got. Got everything up to... Okay, there. I think those missing ones are Dark World monsters that will just be in the Overworld somewhere or other. Okay, we are actually missing a fair few. I think a lot of these are going to be Dark World stuff. And yeah, that must be... Yeah, from there on must all be stuff from the next Dragovian, Dragovian region. Alright, we shall continue onwards then through the clouds. See where we get to. I do love this place. This is the best dungeon in the game, I think. It's sort of the most... I always like a big dungeon. I don't... I like it to be a challenge in that... You know, sort of challenge where you need to actually prepare some resources for it and not just run into and probably end up at the bottom. I do like just the... Uh, I don't know, I'm... Same in Skyrim as well. If the dungeon's too small, you just kind of get to the end and think, yeah. There's one in, um... The... Right. Which way is the right way and which way is the wrong way? Or maybe you can go both ways? No, I'm gonna to have to go and look back. There's a Skyrim mod called Worm's Tooth, and the dungeon in that is so stupidly big. It takes you hours to get to the bottom, and it's it's basically like four or five normal Skyrim dungeons in one. But that was so epic when I did that. That's going back up, isn't it? Right, this is the circle. Then. Never mind. We continue, and I think the chest up here is actually gonna be the skull helm. Or is that the one up to the right? I know one of them's a spear. One of them's definitely a liquid metal slime spear. A hundred percent. I don't know why I remember this stuff, I just do. I've played this game too many times now. Uh, quicker than me. Not for... Right, I think we've got everything from this region now. I don't think we've missed anything. It'll just be the next region where it's picking up everything. Although the next region will go through like 10 times. We'll see you in a bit. Come on. Let me go. There we go. Right. Yeah, it's just these two branches. Get me treasure, and then I think we're pretty much there. <laughs> this chest looks so suspicious, this one. This looks like it's just definitely going to be a Pandora's box or something worse. I can't remember. I think this is the Metal Slime Spear, actually. Uh... Elfin Elixir, okay. We'll take that. We definitely need them. I'm wondering... I don't actually know how to make Elfin Elixirs in this game, but I'm wondering if it's easier to farm them. In which case, spamming Jess's Magic Burst might actually be a decent strat. And usually with that Magic Burst, I don't think we've actually unlocked it yet. But, uh, oh no, I think we do need this guy, don't we? No, I don't think we've actually unlocked it yet, but that's sort of an attack where 
I only tend to fire it if Jess happens to be on 100% tension, and I think the boss is quite close. So I don't use it often, but it is superb when you do use it. Because otherwise she's just spamming Timber attention every turn, which for everyone else is incredible. Come on, which... I think the hero learns his best ability at level 65. So we're a way off that yet. That'll be good when we do get there. Right, King. I remember these guys in Dragon Quest IX very well because they block the corridors. They definitely chase after you very quickly though. No right pain to get out of the way of in that game. Definitely in grottos. Still need an excuse to go back and play DQ9 on the channel. Need some new kind of video idea. Actually, I've still got to do like the best vocations videos, which I promised about a year ago. Oh well, we'll do it eventually. Right, 100% this is the Metal Slime Spear then. Maybe I was just... Maybe I'm wrong in the Skullhelm thing. I can't remember where the other one is. There's definitely two in the main game and then one in the... There they go, Metal King Spear. There's two in the main game and then one in like the 3DS dungeon at the end. Right, that's going to be a massive upgrade from the Hero Spear. Yeah, I think you only get the third one after like 10 of the final dungeon post-game bosses. I can't quite remember where it is exactly. Right, we're nearly there. <laughs> Trying to juke him. I think it should just be around this corner. Yeah, there we go. There's the dais. There is the way out of here. Right, we are done. <laughs> Most difficult dungeon in the game, maybe. And we're through. Okay, right. We're in the final bit now. So we need this guy, 100%. Another Phantom Swordsman by the looks of it, of some variant. Oh god, too many, don't like it. Uh, should we do Symbol or... I think we do Kaboom. I can't remember if Jess ever learning Kaboom or... It's not something in her spell... Her skill tree, so it must be a level thing. Oh dear, <laughs> zero damage. One in 16 chances working well. Just realised that... Guys, the White King's got exactly the same sound effects and model as the boss in um, the Ruined Abbey. Very early in the game. That's probably like episode 3 now. Oh god. Ow. <laughs> These guys pack a punch. Jesus. Imagine what it'd be like coming through here on your own without party members. There's no way anyone would ever make it. It'd be shocking if they ever made it more than halfway. Right, we'll do it on the hill just to be safe. <laughs> Just so I don't accidentally kill everyone and look like I'm right knob. Uh, who did zero? I think Jess did zero, didn't she? So we'll do Timbal instead. And then Kaswoosh. That works better. Hopefully the Omni Hill goes in <laughs> and they don't use it. Oh god. Oh god, no. Oh, don't make me look like a knob on camera, please. Oh dear. Eh. Alright, that's fine. Eh. Mm. They're being nice in the distributing the damage, but okay, there we go, thank fuck. Almost made me look very silly. Right, should be fine after this fight. I can't think of any other monsters. They got so much health, these guys, jeez. And that was with tension as well. Fucking hell. Right, that's gotta be a zap. Actually, we'll timber attention, swoosh. They must die this turn, surely. Just must be on Russian 20. Oh dear. These monsters are tough. Honestly, we're going to see them in a little bit. Why well, I'm saying this, but anyone trying to make it through this place on their own? No words. Incredible if they do. Right, first one's down. I mean, we've nearly been, all four of us have nearly been near death in this fight, and I know we're not playing strategically or anything, we're just kind of trying to get them out of the way, but still. Four highly trained people who at this point have technically already beaten the Lord of Darkness himself. Struggling with the monsters in here, and there's four of us. Imagine if there was one. There we go. It's a bit painful here though. Right, there might be another monster somewhere. Can't see any. Right, I mean we saw right at the start of this episode when we first spoke to that woman in the Argonia church, something about Eltrio. It's a tombstone description. The inscription reads here lies my beloved Eltrio, may him rest in peace. Hmm, let's chat to the party. Why do you reckon there's one grave stuck out here on its own? Yeah, I'm popular. <laughs> Interesting theory. Heard that, no, heard that name somewhere before. 
Someone tells me this grave has a story. His wife, maybe. Well, we know from the lady at the start of this episode that Eltro was King Clavius, his long lost brother. Oh, we definitely need this guy. Oh, Metal King's like Yeah, we'll go for him. <laughs> when there's a Metal King's like you have to go for it. That's the rules. Eh, there we go. I don't think this place... I think Slime Hill is still a better... Oh, there's two. I think Slime Hill is still technically a better training spot. Just because you get more of them. But... Alright, we don't have Mori, so we'll just use Metal Slash. That's all Angelo is useful for, really. He can't really do much against these. I feel like in back in the day, I think I tried to use Rain of Pain. The bow ability with Angelo. I don't think it ever kills a Metal King Slime. I don't think, anyway. Oh dear. That one didn't work. Well done, Angelo. You'll get him in five turns or so. Uh, oh, he's still going to be faster than me. <laughs> Please. We might go first. I might get it. Ooh. Yeah, beautiful. Always a good day when you can get rid of a Metal King. Should get a cheeky level, and there's all our MP back. Beautifully. PS2 version didn't do that. It didn't give you your MP back after you got a level up. Right, we must be going for Lightning Thrust. We'll go for 59, and then we'll put the rest in Swords. In the PS2 version, you didn't get any HP or MP after you leveled up, but this version is a little bit nicer, the 3DS version. There's kind of a lot of just nice quality of life improvements. One for Mori as well. I've got no idea what we're doing with this skill tree. No memory. I've still not used him in, in a fight yet. Right, he's got Kazing. Well, I'll go for Hand of God. That's the one. I yeah, still haven't used Red either. She might have Blade Cascade already. She's got Drain Magic. She does now. Right, and then the rest. She's got Kazing and Blade Cascade. I think we just go for the HP buffs now. I don't think there's much left to get for her. Blade Cascade, I remember being a very good ability. Yeah, literally haven't even used them in a fight once. Uh, right, that's definitely going to be the way forward. This must be treasure. Could this be the Skull Helm? I don't remember it being. <laughs> I don't think it's another Pandora's box. Oh, Mini Meadow. Oh, we'll take it. Better than nothing. Right, I think we're pretty much there now. I think we got every enemy in there as well. Which is always good for the best diary. It means we don't have to come back. Now we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We are through. And no music at all in this place, just one stray door. Let's give it a knock. We come all this way for nothing. That gate's a whopper, isn't it? Wonder what's behind it, eh? It won't move an inch. What do we do now? Well, we can't just turn back. Come on, someone must have a bright idea. Uh, Munchie? What did Munchie just do? He's wandered in on his own. I feel like this is the first time that Munchie kind of does what he wants. <laughs> All the other times you've sent him into holes and stuff, he has been following your orders, but... Welcome to the Dragovian Sanctuary. We Dragovians are capable of existing in two forms, human and dragon. I am Chen Yui, a Dragovian elder. I'll be your guide here. I will say no more than pay attention to the spelling of Chen Moi and what you can make if you rearrange the letters. I'll say no more than that. It has been many hundreds of years since humans last set foot within the sanctuary. Your sudden appearance may shock some Dragovians. That is why I would like to accompany you. Okay. You may feel uncomfortable at being escorted, but I pray for your understanding in this matter. Oh, fair enough, I accept that. So, on adventure with Chen Mui. Right, oh, these dragons are definitely a photo of you. Yep, I can see it. <laughs> There's a golden slime that... Oh, well, not going to get a picture just yet. What has happened here? Looks a little bit quiet. What's this? What happened? The sanctuary wasn't like this when I left. Well, hold on just a minute. Let me get this cold and slime. Has to be done. There we go. There might be another picture of the dragon's guarding it. Oh, well. I'll look at that later. Right. You, sir. What has happened here? Are you... 
Are you humans? We are indeed, man, but don't assume our species, come on. Well, it doesn't matter. We're dying out anyway. Tell me, what is going on? What in the world happened here? Why doesn't Chen Mui know? He's our guide. Just in time to witness the end of the Dragovian race. Yeah. The end of the Dragovians? Things are even worse than they appear. We had better visit the other elders. We must get to the bottom of this. Indeed. Not that we really give a fuck about this new race of people, but I guess we'll get involved for moral reasons. Right, is this the place of the elders? Master Chen Mui! What a surprise! It has been many years. When did you return? Save the pleasantries. You must tell me what is happening here. I apologize. That's a matter for me to discuss with the council elders. Pray let us pass. Most honored Chen Mui, you may pass, but I cannot permit the humans to enter the council chamber with you. Yeah. We are facing a dire crisis, and you stand on formalities? I will take full responsibility for my guests. Now move out of my way at once. What a man. It appears your mind is made up, Master Chen Mui. In that case, please enter. There we go. In terms of what this place is based on, I do get quite... I get that big Chinese vibes from this place. I'm not quite sure like where exactly. But, yeah, it seems the dragons in particular. The Council of Elders is in session. Ah, if it isn't Chen Mui. Gotta say, she looks worse in HD. It is. It is indeed. Welcome back to the Council, Chen Mui. He sounds like Domenico. Must be same voice actor, I reckon. Thank you. But let us save the pleasantries for later. First... Tell me how the sanctuary could have fallen into this state. Ah, uh, yes. I forgot that you left before the ritual was carried out. Very well. Let me tell you how all this came about. Yeah, my name. Story time. Ah, uh, this thing. Just Always. after you left Chen Mui, the Lord of the Dagovians came to a momentous decision. As of course you know. We Dragovians are both human and dragon. He decided the time had come for us to abandon our human forms once and for all. What? Preposterous! Does such a ritual really exist? Our Lord ascended the heavenly dais to test the ritual on himself first. Once it was completed, our lord became a dragon once and for all, or so he thought. In fact, the ritual failed. As you know, it consumes a great deal of energy for us to remain in our dragon forms. The ritual compensated for this by replenishing the energy from the ambient surroundings. In other words, our lord began to absorb the energy of his fellow Dragovians. I like this. Appreciation of classical physics, conservation of energy. Yes, I approve. We are slowly being consumed by his unending hunger for energy. Thus, the sanctuary has fallen into discord and disarray. Makes perfect sense. I'm happy with that. As soon as we realized the ritual had failed, we appeared before the Lord of the Dragovians to plead with him to reverse it. But the ritual appears to have affected his mind as well. In his current state, he cannot be reasoned with. Yeah. What now sits upon the heavenly dais is not the Lord of the Dragovians, but a savage, uncontrollable monster. He attacked us. We had no choice but to withdraw. And soon, the Sanctuary of the Dragovians will be no more. I can put it no more plainly than that. Oh, we understand. I see, I see. It appears 
terrible events have unfolded during my absence. Chen Mui, I meant to ask earlier, but who are your companions? They yes. appear to be humans, if my eyes do not deceive me. I mean no rebuke. I am simply curious. We are courageous eyes warriors. Do not deceive you. These humans intend to confront the Lord of Darkness, Rapthorn. How does he know that? And why is Yanga so pleased with himself in the background? Indeed. Is he... Me? There will be time for that later. They plan to confront the Lord of Darkness, you say? That's right, even though we technically beat him last episode, yes. that is the case, they have arrived at a most fortuitous point in our conversation. But can we really entrust such an important task to outsiders? Outsiders? Hmm. Perhaps you should introduce yourselves to the Council of Elders. Just me? Okay. Well, they've got classic vibes of not trusting outsiders, but... It's only natural to exist in both forms. Yes, yes. Meaningless nonsense. Haven't you grown into a fine young man? What? The fuck are you talking about? You haven't met me before. Hmm. Interesting. It's a way to save Lord of Govins by defeating him in battle. That's always the way. It's Dragon Quest, man. Right. And then one more elder. Perfectly aware of how powerful Rathorn is. Why did you not participate? You could have had a go. Right, talk to everyone. I see. It would take powerful warriors indeed to overcome the strength of the Lord of the Dragovians, which makes these humans perfect for the task. Yang is smiling away again. And indeed, their valor has been acknowledged by none less than the Godbird Imperia. How does he know these things? The Godbird Imperia. Yes. I hesitate to ask any more of you. When you already journey under such a terrible burden. Burden? But before you confront Rapthorn, I would ask that you face the Lord of the Dragovians. Think of it as a personal request from me. Will you accept? I will accept. I had faith in you from the very start. Simply hearing that lifts my spirits immensely. Wonderful. Please Come to my home, where I will prepare a cheese banquet suitable for great heroes such as yourselves. Cheese banquet. Interesting. Well, we know another beloved character likes cheese. He's also got a very similar haircut to another beloved character. I wonder. Alright, um, I never remember which one is, is. Is this one down there? It might be that one or it might be this one. Or oh, this might be the side entrance. Oh, I can't. No, that's the item shop. Never mind. Right. It'll be down here then. And speak to Chen Moya with his suspiciously spelt name. I'll oh, say no more. Here we are. Is that a massive vat of cheese? Master Chen Mui, you finally return. I have looked forward to this day. Ah, yes. Thank you for watching over things in my absence. I brought some human guests with me today. I want you to make sure they are comfortable. Guests from the human world? Do you mean one of them is Miss Shias? Why don't you begin preparing tonight's meal? Who? What? Of course, Master. A cheese banquet, I presume. I'll begin preparations right away. Who is this Shia? Make yourselves at home. Answer my questions, man. I have so many. Ah, oh, there we go. Beautiful bit of music. Why is Maury's scarf still blowing? Spread, eh? I don't think I've ever eaten that much cheese in my whole life. Not that I'm complaining, mind. That was good grub. I'm just feeling a bit cosy around the old midriff. Oh, you gotta love him. That's Yangus, always thinking with his stomach. By the way, there's something about this Chen Mui fellow that sticks in my mind. Go on. We only just met him today. How does he know so much about us? I wondered the same thing. Actually, I found the attitude of the elders even more bizarre. It was as if they'd known about you for a long time. Yeah. Right, I don't know it's nothing weird. I fucking love him. 
What are you asking? Oh, Shem, what's it, bloke? Hey? You know, for once, I actually agree with you, Angus. Well, I think so. I seriously doubt he'll spit out the truth there and then, but it can't hurt to try. Yes, why is Maury's scarf blowing indoors? <laughs> Have to wonder. All right, there's a chest here, but securely locked. Even the ultimate key can't unlock that one. A mystery. Take a cheeky mini medal and nothing. All right, well let's speak to Chen Moy. See if you can shed some shed some light on this confusion. Where is he? Oh, cotton slime! I just saw it. There it is. I think we're two for two out of the Dragovian sanctuary now. I think. Yeah, honestly, it's just the really boring photos I've got to do left. Like it's all the ones where it's kill 30 and then monster will appear. But... To Eltrio, the human who promised his heart to Nishia. The road here is long and fraught with perils. So he came up here himself? She passed away not soon after. Oh, many interesting things there. So all of what I was saying earlier about what would happen if you tried to come up here yourself. It looks like Eltrio tried. He tried to solo the Dragovian path and evidently died on the way up. The fact that he made it as far as he did, like he was almost there. He was so very close. Right, Chen Mui, tell me your secrets. All of them, please. Yep. I have to ask you to wait. <sighs> Focus on the matter of hand. Oh well, not going to get anything out of him now then, actually. Let's see if there's any interesting books. There must be some decent lore in here somewhere. Bustiers, okay, yep, yeah, that's not the kind of lore I was hoping for, really. That is the Dragon Quest VIII, the lusty Argonian maid right there. Right, let's go back to the party. Team, I did not find the answers we were looking for. Let's just spend the night, and then I think it's up to the Heavenly Dias. Wakey, wakey. Oh, Wake, any, um... already. How do you feel? Did you sleep well? Oh, I've only had about two hours because it was Ultra Miami. Glad to hear it. Yeah. I'm counting on you. Right. Today you will visit the Heavenly Dais. The path is a labyrinth. The entrance lies beyond a portal beneath the council chamber. Okie dokie. Right. Well, we're not going to be any more ready than we already are, I don't think. I can't remember where that second skull helmet is. <laughs> I did see one comment that said it was in the desert region, but I did go there. Didn't see it. Maybe I didn't scan deep enough, but... Oh, well, I'll Google it eventually. It won't take long. I don't think it's up here. Could be wrong. But yeah, we'll try and get two, I think. When we're going against bosses, I don't know who the best two people would give them to are in normal bosses. Maybe the hero. You may pass. Yeah, I mean, we're going to vary up the strategies a lot. Now to me carefully. I cannot approach the Lord of the Dragovians in his present state, lest he drain my own strength away. Thus, I cannot accompany you to the dais, but I'll be fighting alongside you in spirit. I believe in you. I know you can bring the Lord of the Dragovians back to his senses. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chen Moy. And off we go. Oh, we get the mysterious tower theme for this place. Oh, it's Munchie. We haven't seen him since we first got into the sanctuary, since he opened the door. How very interesting. Do love that little squeak. Right, oh, this place hasn't got a map either. Well, that's no fun. Right, I'm going to deliberately go the way that I don't think it is, because we want to find all the treasures of this place first. And we're going to fight... Well, we may or may not fight all the monsters on the way here the first time around, because we're going to be coming through this place a lot. Um, can we go that way? <laughs> I'm trying to work out where all the treasures are. I don't remember for the life of me where. Are we going to go... No, we're going to end up back at the start if we go that way. Oh dear. Right, we'll fight this guy then. We'll fight any guys we happen to bump into. And it's some Solari. Uh, Falcon Blood. Yeah, we'll just do normal strategies for these guys, I think. Timber Attention and then Cast Squish. Hopefully that's enough. I mean, I suspect these guys are going to hit hard if they're anything like the guys in the path. But yeah, going back to this guy at Eltrio, he made it that far on his own, which is incredible. Like, if you're going to be comparing levels, 
He got here on his own. I mean, we were nearly dying, all four of us, at level 40. He must have been like a level 60 guy on his own. The fact that he made it that far as well suggests if it was him up against the Rapthorn, I, he could have done it himself, probably. It would have taken some warrior and a half to get all the way up there on their own. Right, hopefully... Oh dear. These guys hurt so bad. Should have them here though, I think. Eh. Go on. I need a Kaswish all, really. I don't know if... I can't remember if Kaswish all is a thing. They're tanking it so well. I just going to see one hit and dead in it. Yep. Right. Alright, Jess attack as well then, because might as well. I've got no decent attacks for her still. The one you want is Twin Dragon Lash, really, but I never bothered putting a skill point in, just because it's a brilliant ability to have in the early game, but as soon as the late game hits, it's kind of a waste of skill points, really. Right. Heal up. It's going to be a heal up after every fight. Again, the strength of Eltrio must have been mental. He must have had brilliant healing abilities as well, as well as just have been an incredible warrior. Alright, we've got another grave up here. What's this one going to be? Here lies my beloved daughter, Gia. So we know Gia died just after... I don't think this is a foe, just checking for that. We know Gia died just after Eltra, and we know they were together. And we know... Did it say that Chen Mui was trying to separate them? Hmm, many questions at this stage. It'd be very interesting to find out what happens to them. I'm still trying to look for treasure, but I can't see any. Well, that path is broken. Is that a chest? No. I'll continue up this way. It's... All right, there's a chest here at least. At least we have come the right way for treasure. And it is a <laughs> dangerous bust here. Oh dear. One for the off-camera gameplay. <laughs> right. Oh, is that is that water? I can't. Wait. No. Okay, that's just where the clouds are kind of clipping. I was gonna say we must be like. I mean, when we first came here, I don't know if, like, the place you teleport to... Is the grave? Right, yeah, it is. I don't know if the place you teleport to, like, at the top of the dice that you see in your dream, like, where we first came with the bird. I don't know if that place is, like, geographically close to where you ended up here. Like, close to the Dragovian path, or if it just teleports you to, like, into the clouds somewhere. Not really sure. I suppose it must do, because we started off underground. And then it ended up in the clouds, so I suppose it must be a teleport of some description. And then not just... <laughs> we can't have gone underground and then ended up above the clouds. Although the place was quite high anyway. I don't know. <laughs> Again, questions that will never be answered. Unless there's a Dragon Quest 8 too. Right. Uh, <laughs> never gonna get past that. These are the guys from DQ9 that you need to use Frizz against to... Um... Yeah, what we were just called team because I can't be bothered. Use Frizz against to unlock the Sage. Back in the good old days. Oh dear. <laughs> there should probably be a better team that I use. I mean, there's probably a... There's going to be a difference between a good team for the actual monster ranks and then a good team for just normal fights and bosses. This probably is not the perfect team to um, fight normal fights with because they spend a lot of time healing each other. Put the speed on first, so why not? Try and blaze through this. Very difficult episode not to check my phone for this one. I'm usually very good at, like, when I'm recording, I just concentrate. But I want to know about Ultra Miami. I want to know if it's going ahead. I'm having to be very good in not looking at my phone. It's always a challenge. Social media. Be the death of us all. Come on, monsters. Do your job. Oh, lovely dodge. Mm, not so lovely. <laughs> it's just painfully slow, do not it? Go on. If you're skipping ahead in the video, I don't blame you. Don't worry. Right, I've got one down. Oof. Dodging all the crits, which is quite nice. Right, let's do some proper damage, though. I think we'll keep the speed up on until the boss fight. Just to get things through a bit faster. It's always nice that trolls have got low defense. They've got high HP, but low defense. It's very nice to see how much damage you can really do when there's no defense in the way. Yeah, they've got like a thousand health, just normal monsters though. 
There we go. Second one down. I do love that animation. They make you worry for a second that you might be hit by a crit and then... Nah. Straight on the back. There we go. Got there in the end. They've just got a painful amount of health, these bosses. But to be fair, these enemies even... To be fair, these are the toughest normal enemies in the game, I think. I can't think of any other region where there are stuff. No, I think it must be this. Oop, nearly. Because, yeah, there's... What else have we got left? I mean, the only enemies I'm really missing from the best diary are they're just the odd ones I've missed. A couple of Dark World enemies that will be in the overworld somewhere. Plus, just some of the guys in the ocean, I think. Oh, we've made it to the end. We must have missed bits, surely. Or <laughs> well, maybe we did cover everything there. I can't quite tell. I think there is a second half to this place. Oh, God. Oh, I don't want to fight it. <laughs> it looks terrifying. We'll save him for a bit later when we've got a few more levels, I think. Probably beat him comfortably, but I can't be bothered right now. Right, up the magic steps. Getting higher and higher. And... Yep, there's a second half. Oh, God. He looks terrifying as well. A mask strapped to his face. Right. This place is very reminiscent of the Realm of the Almighty in DQ9. Just different in the... Oh, I love this waterfall, the fact that it goes off. It's like a place from Avatar, in a way, nearly. And the medal will take that. That's just a very nice. Uh, no, please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the locations they build in this place are very inspired. Some of them are just carbon copies of previous DQ9, uh, DQ games, but... So I very much like the overall design of this place. And very cool looking Dalahan as well. Alright, chest up there. Grab that one as well. Yeah, I think I'll save like, this guy we've killed already. Oh, there's no way we're making it past that. Oh, we have. Well, gaming level 1000. Another mini medal. We'll take it. Better than nothing. Are we doing it twice? Oh, we did. I'm shocked. Right, I think we have... I think there's one more treasure up here somewhere. We still need a claim. Oh, please don't run after me. Oh, he is, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> he's never getting out of that one. Right. Alright, he's, he's on his own at least. Seven of Darkness. Yeah, this must have been one of the guys we're missing from the best diary. I mean, we haven't got a massive amount left to do in this game, to be honest. A lot of it from now is going to be off-camera, just levelling up. Because there's... There's all the enemies, which we'll definitely do in this playthrough. We need all of the photos. And then after that, it's just all of the bosses. So there's not going to be that many episodes left. Even though there's quite a bit left to do, a lot of that is just going to be off-camera grinding for levels. It'll take a long time, but we're nearly there. Alright, that's him out of the way. Yeah, I think to get all the enemies, I think we pretty much just need to go back to like every overworld location. Because it's, it's when Raptorn opened the, um, this is Big Raptorn, it's when he opened the world to the World of Darkness when Imperia flew through. Ooh, or a Kalkan. He did canonically let in basically all of the minions from the World of Darkness as well. So they are all in the World of Light now. And I don't really know what the story is from there. Was that a chest? It was. Oh dear. I imagine the story is just kind of as soon as you kill Raptorn. Oh, there's the Skull Helm. Right, there's the second one then. We can make a second Timber Attention. We'll need to go back and buy some supplies before we do, but there we go. We've got it at least. But yeah, canonically for the World of Darkness monsters, do they disappear when Raptorn dies? Oh, Metal King. Or are they just, is the vibe that they're just kind of slowly hunted down and killed? Because the, the gateway was closed, so I suppose only a finite number of Dark World monsters came through. Yeah, maybe they just slowly were killed off by the hero. Maybe Trodane and the hero, when he becomes captain of the Castle Guard, just organises some expeditions to kill off some Dark World monsters. And they just gradually dwindle. Right, fingers crossed. Missed them both there. Well done, Angela. Fingers crossed we get at least one here so we get all of our MP back. Uh, I think they've got like 20 health. They're never going to be killed by Metal Slash. Still got them both. Alright, one's down. I think the other one's still got a turn. Ah, uh, well. We got one out of two. We'll take that. And... Okay, yeah. I can't remember where Jess's skill points was. I think she's going towards Magic Burst. She's not far off. Only a few levels. So that's three levels, I think. 
the current rate. I think after we get that with her, we just aim towards Kasnus, I think. What are we doing with... Oh yeah, Pearly Gates. I mean, it doesn't matter at all what we do with Angelo's skill points now. I'm never going to use any of these abilities. Right, I think, by the looks of it, we have arrived. I think this is a photo. It was. That is memory from one year plus ago. Right, in we go. Let's see what awaits us. I mean, it's almost tempting to go back and make the second Timber attention at this point, but I can't quite be bothered. I think we've got a decent shot here. Oh, God. That looks incredible, though, doesn't it? That is a very cool dragon design. Like, his front legs are... Like, he's not a four-legged dragon, as is tradition. He's got his front legs as, like, arms coming out of his shoulders. Or, like, the sort of sides. <laughs> that is a very cool design. That's quite unique, I think. Hello, beastie. That is the worst Ra in the history of the world. Why do humans dare to appear before me? Who, us? Perhaps to offer themselves as sacrifices. No. Very well. Your wish is granted. Oh dear. Well, it was always going to be a fight. We knew this was coming. Right, here we go. And we get the Dolbegus boss theme. Right, let's call in the teams first of all, and keep the speed up on from now. I don't think they're going to do much damage here. At least we can use it to work out what the dragon is going to do. High defense by the vibe of it. Right, critical attack straight away. That's going to be a one-hit kill on anyone, isn't it? Watch your heads out. Alright, this guy is formidable. You can tell that much. Two crits in a row. Uh, I mean, there's not much point in continuing <laughs> this call cool team. We might as well, though. And a third crit. He's taken out the whole team in four turns. Okay. We're in for trouble. We know that much. I can't remember if Kabuff... No, I think this is going to be a fight of using Defend and Defending Champion a lot. Because I don't think Kabuff actually blocks against crits. Yeah, again. <laughs> well, I mean, at least he only gets one attack per turn by the looks of it. Okay, and sometimes it does zero, which is good. Yeah, this is going to be a very cagey fight, I think. It's going to be a lot of defending. Okay. Oh, and he's got Scream as well. Right, they're out. Okay. <laughs> now I don't know. Right, who's it going to one-hit? It's going to one-hit kill Jess or Angelo, and probably me. Yangus might just about survive if he's on full health. I think we do just normal. Uh, I don't know. Right, Angelo without question defending champion. It's just about whether we do that for the hero and Yangus as well. Ouch. At least it wasn't a crit. Oh god. It could have been worse. Alright. So he could... Did Angelo go first? He didn't, did he? So... Okay, I mean, this one is fairly... Does itself. It's going to be a Falcon Slash and a Typhius Maul. Oh, we should have had Angelo use Oomph on Yangus. That's got to be a timid attention. I think that has to be a full heal on me. Even though... Has that done more than half? I want to risk it and use the Oomph on Yangus just to do more damage. I think we play that risk. Let's see how well this plays off. Uh, okay. Ah, that's the, that was he on 440. That did three more damage than his health. Ah, oh, that's frustrating. Right, that has to have... Yeah, I think that has to be an Omni Hill then. That has to be... Symbol. And that has to be Kazing. Yep. Oh dear, he's gone first. Okay. He's missed Jess on every hit. He did zero damage that turn. Right, we're going to be all on full health at least. I've left speed up on that. I mean, might as well now. Okay. Right, well, we've done some damage and we're all still alive and on full health. That's good at least. It's going to be a Psychop, Psychop. 
and I think this time it's an oomph first. It's so annoying that it does ever so slightly more than Yangus is for wealth. I think we play the risk again. Ouch. Okay, could have been worse. Angelo's going to be on 50 tension, isn't he? He's on 100. Right, okay, in that case it's a hero on the hill and then Angelo to attack. And the, I mean, the hero's on 50 as well. Uh, I don't think he's close, so I'm not going to go all out. That's a Typhus Maul. That's a Timber of Tension. I did use on the hill as the hero, didn't I? I think I did. And that has to be a Falcon Slash. Oh, he's dangerous. <laughs> okay, well that's gone in. That's good. Ah, uh, yep. He was never living through that. Fair enough. Right, me and Jess are both on 50. Okay, there's that. In that case, there's not much point Jess using the Timber here. Uh, I think it might be worth her now using Accelerator. I'm on 50, aren't I? So I'm definitely attacking. Just to Accelerator and then Angelo to Kazazing. I think that's it. At least to be... Oh, I've wasted their... <laughs> yeah, okay. I've wasted their attention there. Now we're just stupid fast. <laughs> Which is a good thing, but we could have done some damage with that. First time we've seen that. Okay, that's one multi heal. Right, um, I attack the knight. Yeah, it's Psychop, Psychop, Timball. And um, multi heal. I mean, we're definitely going to go first <laughs> with everyone, I think. Except Yagos, who has revived and missed it. So, 5, 5, 5. Alright, everyone on 5. Me on 20. And Yagos should go to 20. No, it's dead again. <laughs> um, right, it's... Am I on tw I think I'm on 20, aren't I? In that case, yep. And GS Timbal again, and then Angelo Revive. I mean, everyone having Kazing is so helpful. I, mean, I know the hero doesn't have it, but... You can just get the revives in like it's... It's almost the same as a heal. <laughs> Except they lose all the buffs. Again... <laughs> He needs like one more level and he would have been fine. <laughs> right, <laughs> same again, I think. Right, Jess and Angelo are both on 50, aren't they? In that case, we might as well have Jess Kazing here and then Angelo attack. Might as well, I think. Just to get that extra damage in. And he goes first because of the speed. Can't have been on 50, can he? That was quite weak. Ouch. Uh, right, I mean, the turn does itself. It's a Psychop and a Kazing. We must be semi-close. We've done lots of big tension in the tax, but he's got so much defense. Okay. Decent. Right, got a free turn out of that. Right, Psychop, Psychop, Timbrel. And I think... I think we risk the imp here. We go for Yangus, even though he's died immediately every turn. Alright, Jess is on 50. Yangus is ready to deliver a killing blow if he survives. Ouch. Uh, not Yangus, please. Oh, for God's sake. Uh, everyone. Uh, we're in trouble, not. Oh, it's just got to be a psych up, isn't it? Can't do anything else. Ow. Oh. oh, dear. Oh, he's missed. Thank God for that. Right. Oh, I think Hero defending champion here. I think, because Angelo has the Kazing. He could heal, but that's... Should he heal? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to on the heal. They're all at max speed, so they're all going to go first. In that case, he might as well full heal and save the MP. Mm. Not sure, now. <laughs> mm. Okay. Okay. Well, that's one multi-heal then. I think Yangus might... Is he still oomphed? I think he is. Right, in that case... I think we're pretty close then. Just Timbrel. Oh no, is he on 20? Well, he might as well attack. Oh, that could be a finishing shot then, I think. 
I think he is on 20. He's slow though, so if he gets hit, he's going down. I mean, as long as it's not Yangus. Okay. Alright, I think we've got a killing shot here. Because I think he's oomphed as well. I think we've done it. 39 so he's still not dead. Oh, he must be close though. I'm, I'm tempted to just go all out attacks here because I think he's so close. I think Jess is on 50 as well, so if we do like a frizzle. Angelo just Falcon Slash. Alright, I'll go in all out. I regret it already. <laughs> Please. Ah, oh, that was a waste. Mm. Oh, we've lost both our healers there. Oh, that was a really bad turn. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Such a mistake. Alright, we do have an Omni Heal, though. <sighs> yeah. No, Psych Up. I don't know how close he is. I think he must be close, but I'm worried I'm very wrong. Oh, we've got an Omni Heal coming. Am I still sped up? I think I am. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Oh, thank God. Alright, as long as it's not me. Okay, good. Right, we're going to get on the healed. We're all good. And I think... Alright, Yankees is on 20. Alright, his oomph goes. But we're on the heal, so we can put the oomph back up. Alright, no, we go for it again. <laughs> all out attack again. Alright, now just do the timber though. And all right, I'm going to have Angelo defend this time. Just in case. I think we're in the clear now. But just in case. Oh dear, not a crit. Fuck's sake. <laughs> I should have used him anyway. Oh, well, wouldn't have mattered. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Psych Up, Symbol, Kazing. This fight should have ended so long ago. <laughs> Only Yangus had stayed on his feet. I mean, literally one more level and we would have been surviving those crits. Okay, normal. Right, they're both on 50. Oh, I think we get them attacking. Oh, I think we go all out here. <laughs> It'll work eventually. <laughs> uh, no, he's going to go last. There's no point doing Helm Spell. Gafrizzle. Falcon Slash. Yep, 100% we've got him here. No doubt about it. Some doubt about it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, because how many times has he been dead in this fight? Like 10. Still not dead. And he's still up. All oh, right. <laughs> I mean, the turn does itself. Timbrel and Kazing again. <laughs> I'm tempted to edit in a counter of how many times Yangus has died in this fight. He must be so close, surely. Oh, good. Uh, not good. Right, Yangus, is he on five or is he on zero? I can't remember. All right, that's a Timbrel and that's a Kazing on me. <laughs> At least the turns are fairly self. Fulfilling. Ah. <laughs> that one's fun. Uh, is Yangus gonna, Yangus gonna be on 50, isn't he? He could be on 100. Oh, I'm very tempted to oomph Yangus and put him on 100. No, you know what? He's on 50 already, so Jess. Jess do the Kazing, but Angelo oomph. I mean, it barely matters. They're all gonna survive a normal attack. And they're all going to survive breath as well. The crits are going to kill him anyway, so it makes no difference. Here we go then. Could be a killing shot if Yanga survives. Jess is gone. <laughs> Here we go. Surely. Is he not dead? How is he not dead? I don't know. Alright, we're in real trouble now. Honestly, I kaplunk. Honestly, I think that's the only way we're getting out of this. I think. That's got to be it, isn't it? Because... How is he not dead? <laughs> Uh, right, Angelo is going to go first. He might as well Kazing just in case, even though there's a Kaplunk coming. Just to get me in there and tank up more damage. Yep, good use of Kaplunk. Uh, if he survives? Okay, got yeah, okay. Good use then. That was done well, I think. He's lost all his MP, so we can't use Typhus more, but he can still use Helmspur. That's gonna have to do. <laughs> How has this fight gone this way? <laughs> We've had so... He's got so much health. And literally, this is only the first one. Right. Jess Timbrel. Angelo Kazing. He's going to run out of MP. He's only got one Kazing left after this. 
I should have bought Red and Mori. <laughs> Giving them the Timbrel. Uh, okay, it could have been worse. It is worse. Uh, I mean, we've just got to attack next turn. We, ha we literally have to. Because Jess has the Kazing. Do I have to Omni Heal? I think I do, actually. Just for longevity's sake. In which case... Yeah, Jess is Kazing and there's got to be another Psych up then. Oh god. <laughs> it can't go on this long and I lose. Oh, he survived for the first time. The Omni Heal is going to cure him then. Oh, brilliant. Well, that's actually gone quite well then. Okay, okay, okay. We're in this. <laughs> what a stupidly long fight this has been. <laughs> right, that's it. Alright, all out. All out. And the Angelo. Oomph. He could defend. No, you know what? He's defending champions free, isn't it? Yes. I'm not going to oomph because I want that last Kazing. So defending champion. Oh, surely he must die here. Surely. <laughs> Jess is gone. That's what the last Kazing is. There we go. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> the stress. <laughs> oh, God. What a long and stupid fight that was. But there we go. We did it. I think if we had a second Timbal, that would have made a lot of difference. Or maybe a third Kazinger, even. There we go. We have freed the Lord of the Dragovians. And there he is. We saw a mural of him on the way in. Big elf is. What have I done? After the ritual, everything felt wrong. As though I were entangled in the threads of some enduring nightmare. Sounds a bit like King Pavan. Maybe same voice actor again. Humans. What are humans doing here? We saved you, man, so give us a million quid. No. I remember now. You confronted me when I was out of control. Yes. Brave humans, you have my gratitude. Had you not put an end to my madness, it would have meant the end of the Dragovian race. I decided to abandon my human form. Yet, it was humans who rescued me. It appears my decision was a grave mistake. Ironic, no? You. How can this be? You know me? Like the elders know me. You saved me. No. You saved all of the Dragovians. What a strange hand fate has dealt us. Let's tell me some answers now. about fate. Huh. It seems you remain unaware of your true origins. Go on. Or perhaps your memories have yet to be reawakened. Very well. You are the child of a human father and a Dragovian mother. The blood of both races runs through your veins. Oh, so answers at last. I mean, all we know of the hero's origins up until this point was that he just appeared in that Medea flashback scene where he's just, it's him and Munchie in the clearing. We don't know how he got there, but child of human father, Dragovian mother. But of that I will speak no further. Consult your grandfather if you wish to know more. Who's that? Chen Mui. I sense Chen Mui. your presence. Reveal yourself. Munchie's coming out of the pocket and... Munchie is Chen Moi. I should have known your penetrating gaze would see through my disguise, my lord. Forgive me. So what I said earlier with the name Chen Moi is an anagram of Munchie. And when I first worked that out, I was just like, that is brilliant. <laughs> Fucking love it. I apologize for hiding my identity from you for so long. I am your grandfather. I disguised myself as Munchie so that I could travel alongside you and see that you were all right. Well, I understand you must be shocked. Anyone would be. Everyone is. Now, I will fulfill my promise to unravel the mystery of your birth for you. It is quite a long tale, however. May I suggest we adjourn to my home? Where we can speak at our leisure. Oh, I Very well. I shall transport you back to the sanctuary. 
And I think off we go. Chen Mui is the hero's grandfather. He disguised as Munchie this whole time. Once Chen Mui has satisfied your curiosity, there is still much for us to discuss as well. You have earned the right to undertake the Dragovian trials. Ooh. Right, so a couple of things. Munchie has the same hairstyle as Chen Mui, the sort of Mohican. Again. And of the Lord of the Dragovians is a wondrous thing. Also explains Munchie and Chen Mui's love of cheese, because they are the same person. And Munchie's fire breathing. We saw in an episode ages ago that when you give Munchie the cheese items in the game, he breathes fire. That is because he is Dragovian, therefore half dragon. So there's that one explained at last. Well then, there is something I would like to give you. Follow me. Yeah, reveal these secrets, my friend, my grandfather. <laughs> Come on then. What is this thing? It's the treasure chest that couldn't be opened. Except by a Dragovian? What is that? Well, oh, that's an Argon heart. This is a keepsake of your mother, Shia. It was given to her as a present by your father. And that must mean our father is Eltrio. Does the jewel set in the ring seem familiar at all? Yes, it's an Argon heart. it might. It's an Argon heart, obtained by your father twenty years ago, during his initiation as Prince of Argonia. Go on then, the full story. Long ago, some twenty years previous, a curious Dragovian girl by the name of Gia decided to visit the world of the humans. There, she chanced to meet a young prince named El Trio. It was love at first sight. But her father, Chen Mui, none other than yours truly, objected. There we go, Chen Mui is the maternal grandfather. He took Shia back home to the Dragovian sanctuary so that the couple could never meet again. He thought it was the right thing to do. You can hear it in his voice that he knows now that it wasn't. He believed there would never be any way for a Dragovian and a human to build a happy life together. But he was wrong. His foolish decision caused no end of sadness and tragedy for his beloved daughter Shia. Shortly after, Chen Mui forced his daughter back to the sanctuary. A human body was found just outside. And honestly, the fact that he made it as far as he did, like 90% of the way through the Dragovian path, he must have been an incredible warrior. Seriously. It was El Trio. He had fought desperately to find Shia again, but died just before reaching the gates of the sanctuary. Honestly, it's no surprise. The death of her true love wounded Shia to her very soul. She plunged into an inconsolable sorrow. Her life ebbed away from her, day by day. One day, even while absorbed in her grief, she realized that she was pregnant with El Trio's child. Every single one of the Dragovians objected, but she stood firm and decided to keep the baby. She delivered a healthy baby boy, but in her weakened state, she never recovered from the strain of childbirth and passed away soon after. Both dead. The Council of Elders convened a discussion to decide what should be done about the half-human, half-Dragovian child. It took several years. Yes. But finally, the Council of Elders announced their final decision. The child's memory would be sealed away, and he would be banished from the sanctuary forever. Why? <laughs> Don't understand the logic, and why did it take several years to make that stupid decision? Needless to say, by this time Chen Mui had changed his mind. He argued 
against the cruel and closed-minded decision at great length. But the Council of Elders refused to reverse it. Chen Nui cursed himself for his powerlessness. Shortly thereafter, the Lord of the Dragovians used his power to seal away the child's memories, and the boy was expelled from the sanctuary. The boy was Chen Nui's last remaining connection to his only daughter. He knew he could never truly abandon the child. So, Chen Nui begged the Lord of the Dragovians for permission to follow his grandson into the human world. The Lord of the Dragovians told Chen Nui that he would only allow it if Chen Nui disguised his true appearance as a mouse. He became Munchie. never spoke directly to the boy. So there's never speaking. I feel like Chen Mui did guide the hero a lot. Because in that Medea flashback scene in particular, Munchi, Chen Mui, goes to Medea and brings her to the hero. Where he's... I, I don't think he's ever really explained why he's passed out in the forest with a cold or flu or whatever, but Munchi goes to the rescue. So he kind of does intervene, even though he doesn't speak to the hero. Considering the hardship his grandson would be facing as an exile and an orphan in a totally new an unknown world, Chen Rui made up his mind at once. He transformed himself into the likeness of a mouse and chased after the boy as quickly as he could. And there we go, the full story of the hero's oh, origins. You know the whole story. My apologies for keeping it from you until now. Please forgive this doddering old man. As for the ring, I would like you to have it. I think Shia, your mother, would have wanted it that way. There we go. We've got the Argon ring, which is going to become a very pivotal item, as we'll see. Perhaps you should have another look around the sanctuary. Or would you like to hear the story again? No, we're all good. A surprise, given the length of the tale. Let us make our rounds of the sanctuary and tell everyone of your valiant service to the Dracovian Elders. Okay, right, that's the last thing we'll do with this episode, go and speak to everyone, but there's one thing that I don't think is ever fully, like, properly explicitly addressed and referred to. The hero cannot be cursed. We've seen that throughout the game. Any monster that tries to use a curse, like um, the first boss, Giza, or Dormagus, when he tried to fire that big thorn curse, the hero just cannot be cursed, he resists it. And that's because, I think they vaguely explain it here, that's because the hero is already cursed with that memory lock thing. So he basically can't be cursed again. And that's the full explanation for it. I think it's this lady that says it. Yeah, right. Up in there. I think it's this one that explains it, basically. It's actually a form of curse. In fact, it's said that those who suffer from its curse become highly resistant to curses themselves. And there we go, there's the explanation of why the hero cannot be cursed. You have been unaffected while those around you were stricken with curses. Yes. It's testament to protect as well as forget. Allowing to your to take Grovian trial. Yes, yes. And last one, just to wrap us all off. I don't think we're going to get much. All of your skill and strength. Now, now we can face Raptor, even though we've beaten him already. Right, I think that'll about do it for this episode. So next episode, we will, of course, speak to Medea, because this is a big twist in the whole things and it's never explicitly mentioned yet but would Eltrio have become king if he was still alive and instead of Clavius and if he did would that not make us the prince of Argonia and the rightful bride to princess Medea we'll find out in the next episode thank you very much for watching I'll see you then peace